Welcome to my channel. My name is Antonio Gervasoni. I'm a Peruvian composer and university professor, and this is the second video in my series on orchestration, which aims to introduce you to some key aspects of this wonderful art. In this video, I'll briefly explain the concept of color in orchestration. In the previous video of this series, I talked about timbre and defined it as the quality of sound that allows us to discern between different instruments. Another way of referring to timbre is to talk about color, a word that takes us to the field of psychoacoustics, which, among other things, studies how we relate sound to the words we use to describe information from other senses. So color in orchestration is just a synonym for timbre. However, orchestrators don't go around saying that some sounds are red or blue, although that's possible for people experiencing something known as synesthesia. Instead, they use other ways to describe the particular color of an instrument. For example, the color of the oboe is often described as nasal. While some may describe the color of the clarinet as crystalline. Words like clear, dark, bright, spicy, sweet, hollow are also used, and many more. Because the orchestra is made up of so many instruments of different colors, orchestrators are used to thinking of it as a kind of color palette, and when working in a piece, they carefully consider how to combine them, just as a painter would do the same with colors when working on a painting. One of the most common decisions an orchestrator must make it's whether to assign a certain part to a single instrument or to a group of them. In this sense, a single instrument can be considered to represent a basic orchestral color, although in reality, acoustic instruments have differences in their timbre depending on the register and the dynamics, some more than others, or in the case of the string instruments, from one string to another. Some instruments have similarities in their color. Horns and bassoons, for example, have some affinity, at least within a certain register, and because of this, they mix reasonably well. The strings, being all very similar, mix excellently, but the result is perhaps too homogeneous. The winds, on the other hand, give the orchestrator the possibility of having a much wider palette. Two or more instruments of the same color, two trumpets for example, produce a result that sounds different from that of a soloist, thus providing a third possibility. Finally, while mixes are interesting, a basic color from time to time adds variety and contrast to the orchestration. Given a passage where the strings need to stand out, one or more woodwinds can be used to add color to an important part, which makes sense if we apply it to one that has a certain degree of importance, the main melody, for example. Doing the same with strings in a passage where the woodwinds need to stand out is a bit weird, as the strings tend to get our attention, but could be accomplished with lower dynamics or by employing individual musicians rather than an entire section. It's perfectly possible to add color to all voices, in which case it may be wise to reinforce the lead voice with additional instruments. In general, the mix of strings and woodwinds is very effective. Flutes and oboes go well with violins, also with clarinets, that in turn mix well with violas. Bassoons have a great affinity with cellos. Of course, other pairings are possible, and their use depends on whether the orchestrator is looking for the instruments to mix well or stay a bit separate. Three or more colors combined produce more complex and generally less distinctive results. Finally, it all depends on the dynamic balance between the instruments. Think of it as the amount of color that is added to the mix. Compared to the combination of strings and woodwinds, the combination of strings and brass presents a delicate problem, dynamics. In a passage marked forte, 
the brass may end up completely dulling the strings, rendering their function of adding color almost useless. In a case like that, the brass may have a lower dynamic, unless of course the intention is to give them more presence. Using strings to add color to a brass-dominated passage is rare, but not unthinkable. The most common case occurs when the basses double the tuba, since their opaque timbre allows them to blend well with the brass without standing out. It's also possible, although rare, to add color with a solo string instrument. Common associations are those of violin with trumpet, viola with horn, cello with horn or trombone, and double bass with trombone or tuba. Other associations are possible, of course, and give less common results, which perhaps makes them more interesting. Despite all the above, the truth is that strings and brass don't combine well. They tend to feel like overlapping layers, rather than blending into a unified color. However, this does not mean that such a combination should be avoided. It's well justified if what the orchestrator wants is to have a less homogeneous result. Dynamics is also important when combining brass and woodwinds. For the most part, combining both groups will only work well in a passage marked piano. If the brass section is playing forte, it's possible to place the upper woodwinds an octave higher. The effect is very interesting. The brass are so loud that it's difficult to distinguish the woodwinds, and these end up reinforcing the upper harmonics of the brass, giving them a kind of shine in the high register. It's an effect that is clearly noticeable if the woodwinds are removed, but less so when they are playing. This is something that happens a lot in orchestration. In other words, we don't necessarily want everything to be heard clearly. Some elements can be placed in such a way that they are effectively hidden precisely because we want that. Using the brass to give color to the woodwinds is tricky, because although their mix is better than that of strings and brass, it's not as good as that of strings and woodwinds. One exception is the horns, which have a great affinity with the bassoons. In fact, Horns are commonly used as additional woodwind instruments, and for that reason, they appear above the trumpets in most symphonic scores. Finally, trumpets also have a certain affinity with oboes, and if played very softly in their lower register, with flutes as well. The combination of all the wind instruments and the strings is a case that I prefer to reserve for a later video. For now, I'll only mention a few important key points. The first is of course dynamics. All groups sound balanced in soft dynamics, but as they progress further and further into louder ones, the brass begin to gain ground until they are a great distance from the rest of the orchestra when fortissimo is reached. This was not a big problem for composers like Mozart or Beethoven, because the orchestra didn't incorporate as many brass instruments as it does today, and also because the instruments of the time were underdeveloped compared to their modern counterparts, that have a much brighter and powerful sound. Therefore, when combining all the groups, some strategy must be used if we want all of them to be equally balanced. We'll see one of the most commonly used in the eighth video of this series. For now, suffice it to say that care should be taken in this situation. Of course, we may want one group to stand out from the rest, and if that group is the brass, then there's probably no balance issue to worry about. I'll also discuss the role of percussion in another video, but I can't talk about color without mentioning that family of instruments. In fact, due to the wide variety of percussion instruments available to the modern orchestrator, many orchestration books define them as instruments whose main function is to add color. Although, as we'll see, that's hardly the case. Percussion instruments present a major problem when we want to use them in this way. They hardly blend in with the other families. They tend to stand out, but this is only a problem in certain styles of music. However, there are ways to include them that produce a more homogeneous result, 
which I'll cover in a later video. In orchestration, color is just a synonym for timbre, and orchestrators describe it with words like light, dark, bright, spicy, sweet, and hollow, to name just a few. Some instruments have similarities in color and blend well, while others sound more separate. When all parts are given to one family, instruments from another family can be used to add color to an important part, but their effectiveness depends on various factors, such as timbre, register, and dynamics. Woodwinds mix well with strings and brass, but the latter don't blend well with each other. The combination of all the winds and strings doesn't present problems in soft dynamics, but requires care in strong ones, because the brass have more sound power. Percussion instruments can also be used to add color, but they tend to stand out, and for that reason, care must be taken in this case. Thank you for watching this video, and subscribe to be notified when I post a new one. I give private lessons online on orchestration. If you want to know more, click on the linked video or visit my website. The link is in the description below.